Howdy y'all and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the President's Day weekend box office haul. We had a big surprise here as well as a major flop. Taking us off at number one, we have Bob Marley One Love. The Bob Marley biopic starring Kingsley Benadir opened up at number one this weekend at $34 million. Now remember, it opened early on Valentine's Day, so overall over the last week, it's made just above $80 million worldwide. Off of a budget of $70 million, and I was a little surprised that this movie has been doing so well. It only had like 43% on Rotten Tomatoes, but the audience score is like 93%. I personally haven't really been interested in this movie, but I think this just goes to show that people love music biopics right now, and I can't remember ever getting one about Bob Marley in the past. So I think that certainly played a role. I think Madam Web being underwhelming to say the least critically and with audiences played a role as well. And and ultimately, I think people are hungry to go back to the movie theaters. We haven't had a huge hit this year, and there really isn't much happening between now and Dune 2, so hopefully this movie can see a pretty decent run. Maybe I'll have to go out and watch it. Definitely a bit of a surprise hit, but I'll tell you what is not a surprise hit, and that is Madam Web. Y'all, I talked about it in my review for the stupid movie. This movie sucks. The audience didn't go to it, it's flopping hard. Over the weekend, it made a dismal $18 million, and it had more theaters that it opened up to than the Bob Marley biopic, so it's losing on a per theater average. Same thing with Bob Marley One Love, it opened up on Valentine's Day weekend, so we have a week of results here, and it's made $51 million worldwide, off of a budget of, I believe, $80 million. And as you guys know, it takes money to market out the movie, the theaters gotta get a cut, so Whenever it's all said and done, this movie is not going to be profitable to say the least. And I mean, it's not even going to get repeat business. People that go out and watch it have been giving it negative reviews. It has like a 51% on Rotten Tomatoes for the audiences, at least for the critics. I think it's like 13%. So usually that percentage for audiences is a little bit higher. If it's sitting at 50%, no one's watching this. No one's coming back to watch it a second time unless it's for a joke, but that may be like a handful of folks. This movie is an absolute disaster and Sony simply cannot keep it up. I'm personally concerned now for their other two projects going out this year, Craven the Hunter and Venom 3. Just at this point, Sony does not have a good reputation for their Spider-Verse films that aren't animated. And I think the dismal performance of this film is going to bleed over to those two movies unless they get really good reviews. Now, I want to do something a little bit different right now and talk about the projections for Dune Part 2, which opens up on March 1st. Right now, Dune Part 2 is projected at 65 to 80 million dollars on its opening weekend nearly double what the first movie made in its opening weekend at 41 million dollars and you have to keep in mind too that that movie opened up on the same day that it hit hbo max so there are plenty of people that probably just watched it at home and it was released in 2021 whenever theaters were very much still recovering from the pandemic people weren't exactly flocking to the movie theaters quite yet it's still made over 400 million dollars i mean it made a ton of money but right now from the projection and the reactions that we're getting from the critics, this movie's gonna do big numbers. It could be our first big hit of the year. Honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised if it made more than $80 million in its opening weekend if it is as good as the first reactions are leading us to believe. The only thing not working in its favor is if people are deterred by the fact that it's definitely a thinking man sci-fi film. You know, it's a bit more of an intricate plot. Some people that watched the first Dune got lost. So that may deter folks from coming in and supporting Dune Part 2. I'm definitely not going to be one of them. I will be contributing heavily to their opening weekend box office. I can't wait. I'm happy to see the projections this high. Hopefully, we can get a big hit. Now, rounding out the top five, we had Argyle at number three, which has made $77 million worldwide. It's sticking in the top three, but it's not making a ton of money. This movie is a flop. Uh, I know that Apple paid $200 million uh, to acquire the rights to this movie. I don't know if that's how much it costs to produce it. 
it, but Apple is definitely gonna be eating a heavy cost for this film. At number four, we had Migration, the animated film that came out in December, and it has made a quiet $256 million worldwide, and this is its ninth week in theaters. Right now, I think it is benefiting from the fact that there are no family movies out in theaters right now. Parents wanna get the kids out of the house, Kung Fu Panda 4 and Despicable Me 4 aren't out yet, so I think Migration is heavily benefiting off of that. Don't get me wrong, it has gotten good reviews as well, but I mean, come on, has anybody even thought about Migration since it came out? Then at number five, another hit from December, Wonka hits $605 million worldwide in its 10th week in theaters, and right now, I am curious if they're gonna do a sequel for this movie. I was doing some research the other day, and I don't think there's any sequel lined up, but in my opinion, this movie was great. It's made over $600 million. Timothy Chalamet is a huge star. Pong King killed it in the first movie. Let's get another one. It really was just a pleasant time in the theater, and I feel like we don't get that very often. But those are my major takeaways from this weekend's box office. What did you think? Leave me a comment down below, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more. Bye, y'all.